music lovers, thrill seekers, and fine arts enthusiasts. Hey, today my, was my last day out at the park. I'm home early, still got my DNR hat on, and I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna start my winter off right now. So hang in there. Let's take a walk outside here. Check things out. Let's look around. Oh, here comes Gunner. Come on, Gunner, you gotta check her out. Come on, come on. There he is. Sit. Gunner. Sit. Are you listening? There you go. All right. I don't see nothing. What? Oh, hey, what's that? I bet it's a clock. Look at that. Well, let's bring it in and have a look at it and see what it is. I got this off of eBay. Just came today. Got a really nice D on it. I know the clock, it looked like it fell off the wall or something like that. It's all in pieces. So let's let's bring it in and see what we got. Before we open this box up, just listen to that. Can you smell it? Oh, yeah. It'll be done in just a minute right there. All right, let's, let's open this box up. Got the old knife out. Hope nothing fragile is in there. Hope I don't fall off the box. And I gotta get a cameraman, you know? Bought this knife out at the Potato Creek General Store, $5.99. We'll have them in stock next season. Come out and see me. Oh, geez, Louise. All righty. Oh, man, this guy, he, he's, he did a good job packing this thing. Oh, yeah, there she is. Let's see. Got some styrofoam pieces in there. Every eBay seller's got a different technique as, as to how they package the clock. But let's just start pulling this thing out and have a, this is a Sakosha clock, small. Small Sakosha clock, looks like it took a fall. It's in a couple of pieces. Oh, that's a nice little clock. That's my kind of clock right there. I don't think it's gonna run too good with that styrofoam uh, peanuts in there. We'll have to get rid of them. See what the back looks like. Yeah, back's broke out of it. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, a piece of glass didn't break. That's a good thing. The face. Alrighty. And I don't see. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let's not prejudge. There we go. It says Tokyo, Japan, Sikosha. These are pretty neat little clocks. This is a neat little clock. I'm gonna take her downstairs and get her some loving. All righty then. Well, I got the old Sikosha clock laying downstairs on the workbench. It's in a few pieces. Must have took a good fall. And uh, yeah, it must have hit right here. Must have took a good fall off the wall and everything seems to be loose. Frames cattywampus because this won't close. And we'll have to straighten that up. Re-glue this on. Here's the uh, suspension spring. Kind of reminds you of something that would have come out of an old Seth Thomas clock with this curve right here. 
and uh, spring looks to be in fairly, fairly good shape. I don't have to make one for that. I don't have one like one left over to about this size, a 10 inch. Or have to remount this glass on here somehow. Dial, not much I can do with that. I mean, it's some chipped off and everything, but this frame is the yeah the case. The case we're gonna have to work that over. I'm gonna get this movement out. Looks like the spring. Hope that spring in isn't isn't broke it looks like it's way out of course that's that could be from not having the suspension frame spring on it it could have uh, unwound that spring that much uh, I don't know if I got a key for it or not we'll have to see if I got a key and uh, yeah let's get busy on this thing don't look that pretty laying on the table but once she gets on the wall man this is gonna be a good runner I bet you well I found the key that fits pretty good Got a few keys left here from my escapades. This old spring sounds okay so far. It's kind of out of the. It's moving around. That almost lasts, acts like that's the sinking spring to the. Let's see, which way is he's turn? Okay, just like, like an Ingram or something. That's moving around. Let's see what we got going on here. Now it looks like it might work. This spring here is out of the thing, though. It's I'm gonna have to release that or something. It's out too far. It must have, it must uh must be a stop that's out of the uh, busted out of the way or something. I'll have to check that out. Well, I'm gonna get that movement out of there. It don't really look like it's that dirty. It's not greasy or oily or anything, but I'm going to get a, the movement out and have a look at it. Might have to soak it up a little bit. And in the meantime, uh, I'll work on this case here and get it, get it back together. It's a nice case. I uh, need some gluing. Maybe a little on this bottom here. This, this piece is broke. I'd have to glue it and clamp it. Do a little touch up on it. Just got some min wax in. Uh, I use a couple of flavors, hickory, coffee. If those two don't do it, can't be done. I pulled the moving out. It's a little greasy on the on the on the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and it doesn't look really look dirty or anything. It looks like it wants to run. I wound the one side up a little bit away from the from the gear here. Turn the winding arbor. It's got a got a, a a good key that fits it snug. You know one time one thing when you're working on a clock or when you get a clock or you got a wind up clock or whatever, make sure your stinking key fits. Don't be winding your clock up with a key two sizes too big, because all you do is round out these winding arbors arbors, and then when you do get a key that fits, it won't fit. The last uh, couple of clocks I worked on, I had to dress these up with a little bit of, of a, a file to get the proper key to fit. This one here doesn't look like it's been abused at all. This clock looks, this movement isn't even dirty really. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and wash it off because it still has, does have a little film on, the, on that. It might have been from, oh I don't know, maybe some lubricant, spray lubricant or something like that. I'm not real sure. But we'll uh, clean it up and in the meantime I'm gonna go through this uh, clock case and see what what we got going on all right I got that movement upstairs or we're gonna go through this Sakosha clock and uh, these clocks Sakosha the Sakosha company of course was in Japan and I believe they started manufacturing clocks around 1881 this clock here I'm gonna guess from the late 1800s maybe into the early 1900s I'm thinking this clock might have been manufactured early 1900s or something like that uh, I'll show you a clock a kosher that I already have it's a bigger clock than this this is kind of a small clock I really like this clock once I get it back together I think it's gonna be a pretty cool clock but let me show you one down the hallway here it's my wall of clocks some of them are running some of them are here's my Sakosha hanging here that I got 
probably about the same time period right there keeps good time it's uh, kind of uh, you really got to have that clock on the wall straight or it's going to stop on you. Uh, I usually have a, a pin right here to uh, balance it out and put the pin there, but I didn't do that because I just hung the clock there and I haven't got around to doing it yet. But that's a Sakosha clock there. So we'll see if we can get this thing uh, up and running. Kind of interested in it. Beautiful. Well, so far I got the, there was a piece broke out of here. And I got it glued and got it flush right there. We'll work it, we'll work it in with a little sandpaper. Also squared the, uh, squared the thing up so the door shuts. This door was, came unglued here and here. And then couple of the screws were missing here and here on the hinges got some screws and put in the hinges it fits real nice and we'll go over this with some you know I'm not trying to refinish the clock like I said in my other videos I don't I'm not trying to refinish a clock I'm just trying to get it up and running and detail it out the best I can with what I've with what I've got here to work with and uh, we'll let that set an hour or so let that dry real good also, I'm kind of debating on this back here. I hate to, even even in this poor condition, I hate to get rid of that Sikosha, uh trademark on the back there. And uh, But I may take and cut a new back for this thing because uh, if you can see, somebody has pieced in a part right here from the back. I don't think it was supposed to be like that. I think they did it because... Maybe the, the hanger was, the holes were wallowed in the hanger or something like that. I think that's probably the reason. So I may, I may end up pulling this back off, making a pattern out of it, and cutting a new back and putting it in there. And then instead of having this Sakosha, maybe I'll just stain the back of it. And, and uh, other than that, maybe I'll take it, maybe if I get that back, I'll glue it together. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I'm thinking new back, though. Well, I got the old movement in the sink here soaking and uh, it's down under the water here. I'm using some palm olive dish washing liquid and some real hot water. And as you see, I got this sponge here. There's a reason for that. This thing is running underwater. Check this out. Man, that's a good clock that runs underwater. I bet Mike Nelson must have owned this one at one time. Yeah, you youngsters probably don't even know who Mike Nelson is. Well, that's why I got the sponge there. Keep it from running out because I just walked, kind of wound the spring a little bit to see how, what the condition was on the spring. And I'm going to pull that out in a little bit, dry it off, lay it out, dry it off, and, and take some synthetic oil, clock oil, and lube the, uh, lube the thing up, and uh, it'll be ready to go back in. Okay, I'm taking this back off. I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to make a new back for it. But uh, this part here, right here, it was nailed on. But from here down, I got a feeling you it's, there's glue underneath there. So instead of trying to take a, you know, a screwdriver and prying and trying to pry that off, that was an old auto glass installer. Used to use this tool right here for cutting out quarter glasses. This is going to be sliding inside here like this to get the inside out and break it away from from the uh, clock case, the back away from the clock case. Okay, but for right now, what we need to do is take this razor blade. This part's not glued on. This part is. So you take your razor blade and you stick it in there like that. Excuse me while I switch hands on the camera. Take your little tack hammer and just tap it on in there and go and then when you get you feel you're hit, hitting something hard, don't go beating it right through the wood, just keep moving it up the line. 
and then we'll free that that outside up so it doesn't crack the wood right here it's enough damage done to this clock already so we're gonna go all the way up the line and do that then I'm gonna take my my tool here this was called what was this called uh, equal this is by the equalizer company what you do is you slide it between the body and the glass like this and you work your quarter glass out of your car with that but anyway I'm going to use this to work this back off of this body just like I was taking a quarter glass out of a car so alrighty we'll see what happens yeah I just wanted to show you what I was doing with this tool I don't know if you can see it in there or not but see how this tool is kind of like a spring metal lift it up and you can actually get it between there and do no damage and I'm going to go right along as much as I can there and then we're going to lift that back off of there all right okay got the back out of there look at that look at the roots on that thing huh here's the problem is this is somebody has put two pieces in there it was a good idea but I think they did it because they wanted to utilize this that must uh that must have fell off or did something i don't know it must have fell off at one the old piece or something what i'm going to do is put that put those together and either i'm going to re-glue that if it, and if it doesn't turn out too good maybe i'll just cut it back i got some wood about this size out in the barn i might get the old saw out, cut it but anyway here's another tool from doing auto glass all those many many years we always called it a bone it's actually a plastic stick one side it's got like a chisel on there you can kind of sharpen that up with a with a uh, with a, uh, a file if you want and this other side it's uh, it has many uses in auto glass uh, put crane windshields in rubber set windshields with it uh, you get a little goop on the on the body you can scrape it off there and it won't won't scratch the body but when you're doing something like this, prying, it doesn't scratch. You can you can work and uh, you know it ends up unscathed. Now this clock has got a few dings and things in it, but as you can see, I pulled that out and I'm even gluing, I'm even gluing this part right here. But I took the razor blade, went down along there and along there. And got the razor blade to cut the razor with the razor blade. Then I took my equalizer tool, got on the inside of the clock, and worked it this way. And then I pried it, got on the end with this tool, which is a plastic tool, and uh, started prying up on it a little bit here and there. And I got it off. And as you can see, we didn't splinter or break anything. And that thing was glued on. Look at the glue on that. Look at the glue on that thing right there but uh, we'll make it nice oh it's dark in here uh, I got to get by this old table saw see if we can't uh, cut a piece of wood for the back let me turn some lights on we're out in the pole barn this is my other man cave set this stuff down measure this out and we're gonna cut a piece of wood out of that piece of wood laying right there. I'm gonna cut it on this table saw here. I wanna show you something on, oh, that's a 360 for you right there. I wanna show you something about this table saw that I use. Gunner, behave yourself. Sit, sit boy, sit. All right, all right, here's my dad's old table saw. Now I'm, I'm an old guy myself. And when I was a little bitty kid, this table saw right here was old when I was a little kid. And that thing has been in our family probably since the mid 40s. I want to show you something on this table side. I don't exactly know what kind it is. It got, looks like I got a one horse motor. Could use a new belt on it. But uh, I inherited it from my dad when he passed away. And I've been using it ever since. And uh, I want to show you a little something on here. It's kind of a unique thing. At some point, my dad must have uh, took this table saw, and this is a vent to, uh, if you keep a, 
a pail under here, or a bucket under here, then the, some of the sawdust will go down and it kind of vents down in here if you've got a pail underneath that you can catch it. But what I'm showing you here is a steel beer can right here that my dad must have put on here. There's a jewelry's can right here. Then he soldered it here. Then this has got solder right here. But this is a Canadian Ace beer can right here. You can see, man, let me just put a little, little spittle on that. There you go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it's a Canadian Ace beer can. And a little uh, bit of a curiosity there is Canadian Ace was once Manhattan Brewing in Chicago. That beer came from Chicago. Uh, Canadian Ace and, uh, was owned by Frank Nitti and Lou Greenberg. And uh, of course, uh, people that know about the mob in Chicago, they were, uh, they were uh, higher ups in the Capone group. Al Capone even had something to do with uh, with the Manhattan Beer Company when, during the Prohibition days. They manufactured illegal beer there. That can there is probably from the early 40s, I would guess, right there. And I'm sure when that can, when they sold that beer right there, Frank Nitti owned that company. So, uh, yeah, it's just a little little bit of uh, useless information right there. Well, anyway, let me, uh, let me see about cutting this wood and uh, making the back for that, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, uh, we ripped a piece of uh, a board out here that was uh, 15 and 3 quarter. We stuck this whole engine up here. Start the old saw. Right, we're going to rip that there. Uh, well, the board is 5 and 3 quarters by 15. But then we got to get the saber saw and cut that. Then I'm going to touch the edges up with the, uh, with the bench grinder. I got a fine wheel on that, and then we're gonna go ahead and stain it and paint it black on the inside, and it should be a beautiful thing right there. Alrighty. Okay, I got the back cut for this thing. As it turns out, what I did was I cut two two of the boards I had identical, and and put them together like this to make the thickness of this board, as you can see. The, uh, the other one would have been too thin. That wouldn't have looked right. I went ahead and went back in the house and looked to see if I had an old back laying around that I could cut down, and I did not. So I uh, opted to use this new board, and uh, I got it C-clamped, and what I'm going to do is uh, run it down and flush it up with the, uh, flush the ends up with, uh, with the bench grinder. I got a fine, a fine wheel on this side and uh, get it to size with the old uh, back and uh, then I'll take it in and stain the back of it and uh, then I'll probably take some uh, some uh, craft paint, uh, some black craft paint and go on the inside where the uh, the movement and everything is going to be installed. All right, I'm just about done hacking and gouging on that thing. Let me turn some lights on so you can see. Ah, that that's makes, makes it even worse. That's the old one, as you can tell. This is going to be the new one right here. And uh, we'll uh, color that up a little bit. I'm not real sure what's going to be the inside and what's going to be the outside. We'll see how she fits. And it's too bad I have to sacrifice this, this old uh, label right there. I hate doing that, but in this case, uh, i got to do it. Well, also, you have to use this, put a punch through there, lay this on the table and punch out the holes where the chime and everything goes, the gong and everything. Also, we're gonna put this together. When we get it in the house, we're gonna glue these two pieces together and let them set for a while. Ah, oh, it should be nice. Old Gunner, he's hanging in there. Oh yeah, he likes, he likes these kind of projects. Gunner. Yeah, yeah, that's a good dog right there, yeah. Yeah, he's a good one. All right, I'm still working on this old Sikosha clock. Well, a bit of change of plans here. I was going to put, take these two, I, may, I cut a back for it, and my intentions were to take these boards and bond them together. But then, when I got here and fitted it, one 
one bat one piece of wood was too thin and with two together was too thick so what I ended up doing let me stick this in here as you can see one piece fits fairly well as you can see uh, I ended up taking this back to the garage and taking the clock case and grinding it down to flush to match the one board and I think I'm better off for it it did away with a lot of the damage that was around there and also let me get something to point with let me get a screwdriver or something it looks like at one point this this old clock here and here had uh, I don't know if it was worms woodworms or termites but there's there's places in this clock like this that are hollow so I don't know what that is I've never seen anything like that this is a soft wood by the way uh, so it was pretty easy to grind down but as you can see I got it flush I'll have to try to fill this in with something like here but uh, I think when I get this done it's gonna look pretty fair uh, it's a nice looking little clock I like the door on it and uh, yeah it should turn out okay but as you can see even in a couple of spots here I seen that that had the wood woodworm holes but in the back maybe that's the problem that the owner had as you can see he's put he cut this out and he put this piece of wood in there for the hanger and I bet this had that worm wood all in it or the holes or whatever because there's some here too here's some here too see how hollow and eight now that that is it's crazy I'm just kind of cleaning it up I use a little glass cleaner a little a little spray way throw it on the wood the woods got some kind of finish on it and there's a crack right here I'll take that sandpaper and just kind of even that crack off a little bit so it's not so noticeable get the top and take a little fine steel wool and go over that and kind of buff it out a little bit with something and see if we can make this uh, a wall hanger yeah she's pretty beat up she's had a had a life but uh, I'm gonna go over this too this I'm not sure if this is supposed to be glued on or screwed on or whatever but yeah well I just got done sweeping the floor huh. that's because I was working on the pendulum and I knocked that off the pendulum right there and it rolled on the floor and instead of getting down on my hands and knees and looking everywhere in the world I get the old broom out and it gives me a chance to sweep the floor and I uh, usually can find a pile of dirt up and usually look through the dirt and there you are I've been working on this uh, this uh, cover for the dial the clock dial I guess you call that an escutcheon I'm not sure that's what you call it on a car anyway kind of shined it up a little bit but uh, one problem I got is the glass to come with it is it fits just barely fits just shot a little bit shy but it's got a big chip on the in the corner here right here and there's no way I can cover that up I mean it's I mean the clock isn't all that great or anything but uh, I want to make it look as as good as possible and what we're gonna have to do is probably cut another piece of glass for that looks like somebody did cut this glass at one time or another I can see where the strokes right there where my finger is that's where his glass cutter came together right there he freehand it did a nice job on it but uh, we're gonna try to cut another piece for this then just a little bit bigger so it snugs fits snug in there also the tabs are broke off there's only one tab left but I think we can uh, make do with some uh, other material to keep that in there I'm not saying what but hmm. I had this old piece of glass laying around 
So what I've done here is I've taken this, uh, the, the glass that came with the clock, and I laid it down there and I traced it out. As you can see the red marker around there. Now I'm going to kind of use my judgment and cut on the outside of that line that should give me enough glass to, uh, to cover. And hopefully I won't uh, chip it and uh, I'll be able to cover up any mistakes I make. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Hey, I'm coming along with this old Sakosha clock. I got the glass cut. Got it installed. I used a little hot glue in that. I hope, it, hope the clock enthusiasts don't throw a fit, but uh, got it cut. At least uh, when you're looking at it on the outside, I got the frame cleaned up and everything. You don't see any chips or anything in it. Cut the glass a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, uh, bigger than the the old one. I don't even know what I did, but the old one. Here's the old one right here. I'll save that for something else. Also got the the back finished, at least on the inside anyway. I painted it black with some uh, craft paint. This side here, I'll uh, take the steel wool wool to it and I'll uh, do a little stain on that hammer it back in there in the frame. Uh, this clock, I wouldn't, uh, this is not exactly a Seth Thomas here. Uh, the wood's real light in this clock. I'm not real sure what it even is. I know the, I know the worms liked it because there's a couple of spots on there that uh, they've uh, had a Thanksgiving dinner on. But anyway, we're gonna put this thing together. I gotta, still gotta lube the movement up. I got it washed out. Looks like you want, might want to run. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do before I hammer this in, I'm probably going to put the movement on this board and then uh, put the, uh, oh, I've lost the stinking gong. Oh, here it is. I cleaned this up, give it a little job, paint job on that. That'll go in here. And we'll put it together and see what happens. Oh, I'm getting the little clock put back together. It's ticking. Uh, put the suspension spring back in. I'm going to clean the, uh, the movement up a little bit. I'm not the movement, but the, the clock case up a little bit. Uh, I got the, the back on. I still got to work on the back. I got some screws hanging out of the back. I got to cut off and fix that up. But the back is on and everything. And I'm going to stain that. Fill, fill in a few of these little cracks and whatnot here. So, yeah, when I get it done, I'll show you what it looks like. Well, I'm just about done with this old Sakosha clock. This is about as good as I can get it. Let me back up here. And it's got some sheen to her. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, as you can see, it was a back basket case. This is what I did to the back. Flip it around. Excuse the wall. Now, this is what the back looks like. I put some stain on the back and clean it up, straighten the front case up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to hang it on the wall, see if it runs. Well, I got the old Sakosha clock running. It's hanging on the wall. We're going to take a look at it in a second. But uh, I was adjusting the uh, the bead on it. I put it on the wall and it didn't... It, it ran and it was real crooked on the wall, so I took it back apart. And this here is the uh, sus the uh, uh, suspension spring right here. And uh, I just barely touched it. And I got the Midas touch today. And I broke it. So I had another one. But uh, I've never really tried to bend uh, a rod like this before. I did have some success. It doesn't look near as pretty as that one did. But uh, let's go see what's going on with the clock. Right, let me shut this door, man. The furnace is running and everything. We're down in the basement. Oh, jeez. All right, there it is. There's a Sakosha clock. Here's another one. Uh, both of these are Sakosha clocks and they both have one thing in common. 
and that's they both took a spill off a wall that one was in pieces when I got it and so was this one and uh, it turned out pretty nice not too bad it's still got some nicks and imperfections here and there but uh, it's running uh, in a couple of days we'll see uh, you know we'll set the time on it and see how it how it does but uh, right now it uh, it's run pretty good all right hey thanks for uh, watching this talk to you later bye now mm -hmm.